my takeaway is just sensitivity to everything of like, um, it's easy to talk about prostitutes and whores and lady boys and all this. And like, uh, I'm very sensitive to that stuff because I know people who are still there that are being sexually abused because they were born into it. There are flower girls that are being sexually abused and they're probably, she's probably still in that. So I like, I think so much of it, I've kind of what I was saying earlier is like seeing people and that fact that like, um, we got to go every day we'd hang out in the bars and just, um, like when they're getting things ready, we'd help them out and just like literally just be people, <laughs> um, with them. But then we also, you have to like buy a Coke to be able to sit down. So we would just <laughs> drink a lot of, uh, a lot of diet Coke, a lot of Coke in, um, Thailand. But then you also had to like watch and see these same women that were expressing earlier of like their dreams and desires and the hardships of their their profession, unfortunately. And then you had to go see them being abused. Like, because it, it's all like you walk down the red light district and everything's happening right in front of you. Um, and it's very intense. It's very, um, it's a really, uh, this and is, that was, I, I would just assume this is very tourist filled. That's what it's all coming uh, yeah, from. Yeah, Thailand, hundred percent. It was in Chiang Mai, hundred yeah. percent tourists. Um, I mean, that's, that's their um, income is tourists. Um, so a thousand percent, whether it's just people who are looking for conversation or people who are looking for more, it starts at those tables when you buy a Coke and then you talk to somebody and then you purchase them and then you go upstairs, you go back to your hotel. And, um, while we were there, people got hurt. They got beaten. Like you could visually see the bruises the next day. Like it's heavy. It's really heavy stuff, but you have to keep it. It's their job. They don't, is is there, is there when you're there, like, is your mission to just educate them or hear them? Or is it to try to get as many out as possible? Is that even a situation? Like, are you able to do that? So the getting out is a very, very long, that is not a five second, because there's so many layers of abuse that are um, within that, that someone who's been in abuse for a long time, you don't just leave because you're so scared. Is it what they call a Stockholm syndrome? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you just keep on your heart is like, I don't deserve anything that's good. Like, and this, yeah. so they just are like, this is what I deserve. So they just go back or they're manipulated into, um, like their pimps are giving them food where they're like in this moment, I don't have food. At least there I have food, like to where there's such an aggress, um, such a stronghold over them. Um, so for us, we stayed at um, a hostel that is specifically that has a cafe attached to it that is specifically um, creates jobs for women who are in the industry that would like to work to get out of it. Um, so it provides housing, it provides um, a vocational training and um, like therapy and talking through things and recognizing stuff. And then at the end, hopefully finding them a job uh, or not hopefully finding a job, but placing them in a workplace. Um, and, but so many people, like I have a couple friends that, um, were like long-term, long-term, like years and years, uh, missionaries in Thailand. And, um, they like talk about how you're like, oh yeah, they've been out for a couple of years and then something happened and they went back like, and it's just devastating. Um, like, but there's just so much mental abuse and aggression, like, aggression and value that is behind that, that like, you just don't, they can't receive it. So they just go back to what they know. Um, so there was, uh, so where we went, it's called lighthouse in Chiang Mai, which is like the most Northern part of Thailand, which is the most, um, still like culturally sound within Thailand, more of like Phuket and, um, Bangkok and stuff it's like LA, um, yeah, truly yeah, it's like LA. Yeah. So, um, it was really cool to be able to see that too, though, of like, a lot of the culture behind it and not there's not culture it's just very westernized um yeah, but Chiang Mai yeah. is like the most um uh culturally sound to themselves <laughs> yeah, yeah. kind of thing um but yeah so much of it is just for us we were there's teams that kind of go through with like YWAM and I went through an organization called Adventures and Missions um where they either have long-term people there or they have short-term or three months to one month something like that but there's constantly people who are coming through yeah um so it is an ongoing just loving on people um so it's not like we were there for five seconds and there is it is hard because it is 
I am a human, I connect with them. That does not mean that the next person that comes in connects the same way. So that is, it's very, uh, it's hard. It's hard. I have a lot of, is it, is it, is it, have you, yeah, of course. Have you ever, like when, when you are there, like, you are there, quote unquote, for a mission. Mm-hmm. How do how do you separate your emotions? Like you, you, you just by you talking, you can tell you're very emotionally attached to it. How do you separate? Because it's, it's it's it could be very draining on you going back to your hotel every night and having these thoughts in your head, or even getting back on the plane knowing you're coming yeah, back. Like how do you how yeah. do you sep- how do you separate that? Um, and, and, do, and do you are are you able? I- to? I think that there's always a piece of me that doesn't want to separate it because then yeah. that's also me not giving them a voice and being able to speak about or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. Um, again, I was there for three months. Like yeah. people have dedicated their lives to this and they've rescued one person from it. So, wow. um, and it's worth it and it's worth it. Yeah. Like, so I think that there is a high respect in not letting it become normalized um, where again, I was there for three months. That should not be normalized in three months. No, no piece of that should be normalized. Yeah. Um, uh, but I think that there's debrief. Oh, there's a, there's a team of people that were there. Um, so we debrief and we talk about how that's not okay and how um, bringing, I think it is, yeah, it is very hard to be in someone's emotion with them, but not with them. I think not making it about myself, to be honest, at the end of the yeah. day, that's selfish of me to yeah. be in the emotion at the end of the day, make it about me and my emotion. That I'm feeling for this person who's actually going through it. Yeah. Um, there's a whole that. different yeah. list. Yeah. I mean, there's a whole different list of things that I'm going through. Um, but I'm processing that. I'm talking about that. I'm praying about that. I'm working through that, nice. um, where they are different emotions. They respectfully should be different emotions because I'm not being touched at night unwillingly yeah. and not yeah. making like, yeah. so, um, I think that's like a big thing within that of just recognizing and that I ha- constantly have to reteach myself because I can definitely get and I, I'm a passionate person. Like I definitely can feel emotions deeply and being like, Hmm, I can't touch that because I, or like, girl, you're making it about you. This is not about you. Are you selfish? (laughs) Like, um, so I think that's like a big piece of it of, um, it's not about me and I need to still be able to, if it's altering my heart enough where I'm not able to be there for that person, that's a, my heart issue. That's not, that's, that's a bummer. 